I'm here with Mary, the creator of Mango Math, and today we're going to be going over the first grade math kit and the different skills that the kit covers. Some of the topics include addition and subtraction of single digits, place value of tens and ones, quantity, simple measurement, and simple shapes. The Mango Math Kits are set up the same way in which we have measurement at the beginning with Algebraic Thinking Next, Number Sense, Geometry, Odds and Order. We follow the acronym of MANGO. They don't have to be used in that order, it's just the way we set them up. Each individual package has all the supplies for up to four students. We like them to be in small groups so that they communicate and collaborate together. The activity Door to Door is one in which students will be using linear measurement in using now and standard unit of measure. So they'll use the linking chains to measure the distance from one door to another door. So they have all these different types of houses that they can place anywhere in the room and then they just measure from door to door. As the students do this, you might want to give them a tip on putting the, the chains into a pattern so that they can count by skip counting. So this one would be five, so they're going to count by multiples of five. It just helps them with their number sense. Caterpillar Counting has students working on their number sequencing up to 100. They will roll a colored dice, which has a red, yellow, and blue on it, and whatever color they roll, that's where they're going to write their number. And in this case, they rolled the number 46. So they'll write 46 on their caterpillar, and then they're going to have to determine what comes the number before 46, which would be 45 and then what comes after it, and they'll fill in the rest of their caterpillar with the correct sequence of numbers. You can also have the students working on counting by twos, by fives, by tens, by using the same game. Winner Dog. This is a great game to start working on number equations. Each one of these triangles represents one. They'll roll a dice. That will tell them how many ones they'll have. In this case, there's going to be six of them. So they're going to count up six of those squares and they can fill it up with any pattern block they want to, they're, but this hexagon will represent six. And they're going to write that now down. So they have six. Plus, they're going to roll the dice again. They have one, so they can fill it in with one triangle. Plus one. Plus again. They have five this time, so they can use any pattern blocks they want to. So this represents three, and this represents two. So I can write down five. I can also write down three plus two, however they want to do it, as long as they're getting the correct amount covered. So they'll continue making their winner dog and keep adding on to their equation. Blockade falls in our geometry lessons. This one is on spatial reasoning. They will use pattern blocks to fill in the pattern on the game board. They are to try to fill this in using the least amount of pattern blocks, so they will have to be creative in their use of space. They can also do it on see who can do it with a certain number of pattern blocks. You can challenge them in different ways. You can say use only 12 pattern blocks or use as many pattern blocks as you can that you have available to you. There's different ways that you can do this activity, but it uses gets students understanding spatial relationships. Skyscraper Math has students working on the height of their different skyscrapers, and it goes along with the idea of bar graphs on how you compare one bar or one skyscraper to another one. So they're going to roll dice that will give them, they're going to add it together to get a total. In this case, it's six. They're going to write six on their board and then they're going to create a tower or a skyscraper that's six cubes high. And they're going to continue taking turns as they roll dice and make their skyscrapers. In this case, my skyscraper is 10. As they fill up their block, which has six squares in it, they're going to then compare their city block to their friend's city block. And they're going to say things like, my tallest building is three floors higher, three blocks higher than your building. Or my smallest building is 
two blocks less than your smallest building. So they're going to use words of comparison to compare their skyscrapers to their neighbor's skyscrapers. And that gets into the idea of bar graphs and being able to read a bar graph. That was just a quick introduction into some of the skills practiced in the first grade math kit. Be sure to play these games with students multiple times because the more they play them, the more solid that they can get the skills down. Thank you for watching and be sure to watch our other videos to give breakdowns of the other grade level math kits. Mm -hmm.